Some of you expressed concern about the length of these videos. For your convenience, check out the table of contents on the right hand side. Feel free to start at the beginning and work your way through the video for some awesome in-depth insights. But if you see what you came for, or just want to see something over that you didn't catch the first time, please feel free. And as always guys, thanks for tuning in. Hey guys, this is Shaft of the Cleaning Casting Crew. Welcome to another episode of Crash Course. I know some time ago I promised you guys a answer to Tasia's Reaper Hellion harassment, which, as predicted, has become the absolute domination of today's metagame. It, this Reaper expand really opens two possible avenues for the Terran player. Either they're going to uh, follow up with Bio, Stimpak, Metabak, Widowmine, uh, generally the composition before the patch is just a little bit later with a different opener or the, a lot of players are following it up with mech. Today we're going to be looking at bio mine uh, composition following the reaper um, hellion but the defense techniques against the reaper uh, expand uh, hold true for either possible uh, scenario so you know, even if it is the mech version of this you're having some trouble with, hopefully this will give you the opportunity to get into the mid game with your economy intact. I know a lot of players are trying to make lings, which, you know, cut into your larva count for drones, uh, to defend this, and there's just better options. Um, we're going to take a look at a lot of that in these games. Without any further ado, let's uh, take a look real quick at um, exactly how this... Uh, this build order looks from a Terran perspective. Uh, we'll look at the the exact details a little bit more, but these are your general timings. Uh, 415, that's usually when the first uh, Reaper arrives. Uh, sometimes, uh, depending on map size, we're going to be looking at Frost Ladder Edition. It's 415 here, but sometimes that Reaper can arrive around 4 minutes um, on smaller, you know, two-player spawn maps. Uh, so, but, but the general thing to take away from this is there's 30 to 45 seconds that you're gonna have to deal with this reaper before your queen pops out. And once a queen comes out, one queen will beat one reaper. Usually you'll have two queens, one at either base, so both bases will be protected. Um, and that's when that harassment officially ends. Sometimes a second reaper will show up and by that point you're going to want four queens, two at each base. Um, but again, we're going to look at the details of that a little more uh, in just a moment. Um, then again, at seven minutes, uh, you know, you got two Reaper, two Hellions, and then 815. You guys can read it. Um, your real major push timing is at 12 and a half minutes. So if you can manage to hold off this defense, uh, without taking severe economic damage, you are going to be worlds ahead of your opponent. You can actually see uh, at the seven minute mark, you know, the Zerg player here is already 12 workers ahead of his opponent. We're going to be looking at a game, by the way, between Major and Hinderlist. So both these guys, top North American competitors, so definitely players to learn a thing or two from. We're going to hop right into this game. We've got uh, Hengelus doing a little bit of scouting around. He wants to make sure there's no bunkers or anything going down. No kind of uh, Terran shenanigans. Major well known for doing that sort of stuff. That's a 16 pull. Finally a 17 gas. This gas opener allows you to take a little bit of an earlier expand. It cuts into your drones slightly going into the mid game, but you'll get the earlier third base by nearly a minute as you'll be safe against the Reaper Hellion. The link speed makes a huge difference. We see that the uh, Terran player, Major here, is cutting his SCV count here at 12. He's building the barracks and immediately, as soon as he can afford it, he's building a refinery and it's not until after the refinery is built that he has to save up minerals and he is cutting SCVs at this point in order to get this refinery out it's only about maybe 10 seconds probably a little bit less but it does begin to affect remember uh, this little count right here this is going to be your uh, mid, going into the mid game this is only two minutes but you can see that uh, you know he'd be even ahead on 
even more ahead on workers you know if he wasn't going for the refinery however the refinery is what helps keep him alive against roachling attacks so this is a defensive opener in a lot of ways this reaper and a hellion opener it's the only thing that's going to keep the terran alive against early game aggression from zerg but the only way to make it viable is for him to be offensive with it it's kind of a defense by offense kind of a scenario you know the best defense is a good offense either way uh you see that it will cut into him um that's 10 seconds of no scv productions he's finally going to get uh his orbital at about 15 um do, 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 do. 15 supply and then here we go there's the orbital um so things are a little bit more delayed here than if he had skipped the gas so he's cutting his own worker count and you have to remember that when you're looking at oh do i want to take a gas don't i want to take a gas I feel like most players, unless you're like Scarlet or a high level professional player with Uber Micro, go with the gas expand as it's going to give you a lot more flexibility. Now that the pull has uh, finished, this is the moment it finishes, uh, we're also going to see the uh, this expand finish. We're going to have a queen and four lings pop out, uh, begin. Um, when these lings pop out, this is all the defense he's going to have four lings against reaper the key to defending uh against reapers with these lings is to stay on creep um reapers can kite lings get free kills if lings run off creep but you can zone the reapers as they don't want to take damage and if they're kiting they're not harassing your mineral line um until the queen pops once the queen pops again you're completely safe Here it goes. And as you can see, the Lings are, uh, you know, doing a pretty good job keeping the drones alive. He has lost one worker. This is going to be the only worker he loses, which is definitely within the realms of acceptable loss. Now you see the third queen is queued up a little bit before the fourth queen. That's perfectly fine. That's one way to not have this impact your uh, drone uh, count too much, but eventually you are gonna want to get uh, a fourth queen. After metabolic boost has started, we do pull off of the gas uh, pretty much immediately. You don't wanna mine any gas. Um, that way you can switch into more minerals. And then once metabolic boost finishes, uh, you'll have the ability to stay alive against any kind of forms of harassment. Now at 615, we are going to begin our third hatchery. And th at this point, Reaper Hellions tend to start poking at the hatchery. This is why you're going to start your lean production. You've also got two more queens in, in production as well. Um, these three will become creep slaves. And they're also here for defense they do very well against both reapers and hellions and then lings to follow up and hold the reaper hellion from harassing and then here at seven minutes we are going to return our drones back to gas and build two gases this is going to help us get into layer tech very very quickly as we have delayed it quite some time Six lings are now in production as three queens will do well on creep, but ultimately these forces will be able to overwhelm the queens. So the lings will be uh, there as auxiliary forces. Two evolutions uh, chambers in production, both as a wall and for some upgrades. And then finally here at 745, we are getting our lair. And a little poking here by the Hellions and the Reapers. Note at this timing, uh, there's bunker there is a bunker here there are some marines here so major is completely ready for any kind of counterattacks counterattacks are very devastating in these situations but um if they don't do damage it really will set the zerg player behind uh hengelisk has elected not to do it and his opponent would have been ready for it but uh either way something i do recommend trying you know every once in a while but also worth noting is that stem pack is about halfway done and we've got two engineering bays in production. So both players are going for the mid game upgrades. 
Um, this is, again, not really an attack that's meant to kill an opponent outright, or not even really uh, designed to destroy the third base. All that uh, Major's trying to do right now is produce, is to get Hendralisk to make way more lings than he actually needs. So the key to holding this properly is to continue making drones while making small numbers of lings to stay alive. You can still see these queens zoning the Hellions and the Reapers. Uh, they're looking for any kind of opening they can find, but again, just these queens being here, their sheer presence is enough to keep the uh, Reaper Hellions kiting. Now, at 8 minutes and 15 seconds, we do see plus one Carapace begin. Note that he is not waiting uh, for uh, enough gas to start both at the same time. Carapace, hands down, way more important than the plus one uh, melee upgrades simply because of the Heligans. And again, 10 drones in production. This is all about the extra drones. By the way, the fourth gas has also been started. That's usually about halfway through layer. And then the Baneling Nest begins uh, about halfway through layer as well. We've got the plus one melee attacks. And sh again, your general setup period. This is where you begin to transition to a more normal game. Note that uh, Zerk vs. Terran is never really des uh, designed to be won or lost in one big battle. It's more a series of small skirmishes, and if you're ever caught off guard or not anticipating the skirmishes, you tend to take heavy losses and lose a war of attrition. So knowing what your opponent to do is half the battle. Okay, so at nine and a half minutes, we are getting our fifth gas, and our sixth gas is going to be coming as well. Um, this is because Spire Tech is the ultimate goal. Um, the Baneling Nest is going to help us keep the Marine count low, but ultimately, Mutas are the goal. So at Eight minutes and 45 seconds, you saw that Ling production really started ramping up. That is the key timing, um, because that's really where you're going to have your maximum uh, two base saturation, but you're going to need some Lings on the field in order to knock those Hellion Reapers uh, off the map, as we saw Hengelis could do there. And then once you've safely pushed those back, um, you can go ahead and make you know a round or two of drones to go ahead and saturate this base entirely you need 24 drones to saturate both minerals and gas a brand new base it's 22 technically but you got to factor in that it costs two drones to make the extractors um <coughs> another key timing is going to be uh here at 9 45 that's going to be when we finally begin baneling speed again this is to help keep the uh the mutilisk numbers down so we start the spire and then as soon as we have enough gas afterwards we begin centrifugal hooks major is also spending a large amount of time knocking these rocks down later on that's going to be very important as it gives his lings more surface area uh, to do damage to things like hellions we are going to backtrack this to five minutes and 15 seconds um at this point in the game the uh, beginning Reaper harassment has been pushed back. Major has chosen not to go in with the second Reaper, primarily because it is such a long map, it wouldn't have been able to do that much damage to begin with. But of key importance here is the fact that it's this early, 45 seconds to almost a minute before Hengelus gets his expansion, that Major is already starting his. This is a very greedy opener. And a lot of Terrans are using this greed. So again, remember, the Reaper Hellion is never intended to kill you. It's just intended to set you behind. So be economic when you're defending. Um, it's at 6.15 that the first two Hellions spawn. And you see them leaving now. Um, so before then, you don't really have to worry about any kind of defense. Uh, notice that it's at 615 that the Queens really start getting in this ramp area uh, and that's going to keep the uh, Hellions from being able to do any kind of run by safely.
notice this queen is kind of parking herself there and then at 630 640 you've got the other th uh, two queens coming in uh, that is not an accident that is directly related to what time the first two hellions can possibly come out um stem begins here at six and a half minutes as well and as you see that actually takes a minute or 170 seconds that's two minutes and 50 seconds nearly three minutes to complete so the very first possible timing attack comes at 10 minutes uh, also worth bearing in mind that means you're completely safe to drone provided that you can defend the reaper hellion um all right and then here at seven minutes we have the beginnings of harassment so at this point this is the earliest possible harassment and have your queens in position, you'll be fine. Do, 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 do. All right, so that kind of goes through everything there. We'll get back to the uh, Zogi perspective. Um, do, do, do. We had this base completely mining. Note to self, edit all this. So here at 945, again, we just started the Spire and Banelink speed. It's now that we begin our fourth base. We can be greedy. Our opponent's been being greedy, as we just illustrated. And as long as we go ahead and get those extra gas, which we've got up now, uh, start producing Banelings in small numbers, only three Banelings here uh, at home, this goes ahead and allows us to be ready for the earliest possible stem timing. Remember I said that could arrive as early as 10 minutes. Well, these three banelings were made. Let's take a look, check it out, check it out. Do, 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 do. They are started about 9.45. Let's do the math, that's 15 seconds. They will be finished at 10.05. Just in the nick of time, to stay alive against a 10 minute timing attack. So again, these are not accidents. So he is building these three banelings, and since no timing pressure is gonna come in this particular game, he's gonna hold off and making a bunch more. And as you can see, just this is a time for creep spreading, building your ling numbers up, your upgrades are finishing, and soon you're gonna have a spire. You're safely on three bases, You've effectively got a fourth base as a macro hatch uh, coming up. And moving into 11 minutes, uh, you really start to set up for a lane counter attack. Uh, that's what he's getting in position for now. You can see that he's got, you know, a huge number of links. But the thing is, with Hellions, it doesn't matter if you have this many links or this many links. Uh, the Hellions are pretty much going to kill you in the same number of attacks. So by splitting your forces, you're really going to hurt your opponent's uh, ability to attack you. If he has to leave army at home, then that's the army not there down your throat trying to kill you. And if he doesn't leave an army at home, then guess what? You've probably just won the game as long as you stay alive. Also of note, we do have a macro hatch uh, beginning. And that started about ten and a half minutes. Um, <laughs> Even with this possible macro hatch, because you're doing Ling Bling Muta, and because you're using Queens as defense, it's very likely you will miss some injects. And this kind of goes ahead and begins to compensate for that. Not to mention he is floating a lot, and you're gonna have a huge excess of minerals. So it's very, very strong to go ahead and get those macro hatcheries. Don't feel bad about getting them in the slightest. Anyway, take a look at this counter attack path real quick as this is something a lot of players uh, struggle with. On this particular map, uh, in particular, you can see that 
The Zelnaga Towers are in some interesting positions, and they are being contested, uh, Ling against Reaper. So, if one were to, say, send units this way, it's a possibility of being scouted, not to mention, you know, there's Reapers on the map. But lots of bad things could happen. By sending him along this route, he's ultimately going to run into a Marine, but... Say that the uh, Terran has his army positioned here in the middle, which is when you really engage with a counterattack. You can leave just this cluster of units sitting, like, say, right here, you know. Um, when the army is out of position to swing back and defend, that's when you're going to send in your army. The, the uh, attack goes in here, and then you swing in and kill. This will not give the Terran player enough time. So it's all in the angle at which you attack. Or counter attack. And at this point, going into the 11 minute mark, we do have three more banelings in production. Again, you know, every minute he's adding a couple more banelings. It's a great decision. As at any point, he could be facing uh, Terran stuff. Uh, again, these are just purely defensive moves. He's not making too many banelings yet because he wants to get upgrades for his mutalisks and he wants to be able to get mutalisks as well. At this stage in the game, it's okay to only have three or four mutas. They're mostly gonna be for drop defense, but he's powering up his gas so quickly. He's already on six gas. He will most likely take a, uh, his gases first at his fourth base. So all the way up to eight gases, that's gonna be a huge number of mutalisks uh, you know, going into a mid game. And he just wants to make sure he efficiently gets to the mid game. The banelings are going to be great for that. And you see now that the one one is finishing for our uh, for our Terran here. Uh, he's also getting combat shields. So this is a very strong attack point for for the Terran. And as you see, you know his units are moving across the map, and it's now that the counterattack arrives. Again, take a look at the minimap cam. When the Terran is strewn out, he goes ahead and attacks. Now, the, some of these units are being sent home in defense. Again, these are units that are not going to be attacking the Zerg. So it's going to make his defense so much easier to hold. And as you can see, the Lings are swinging around here, and as the uh, Terran Bio is getting out of position, the Lings are doing a really great job against the Hellions, considering it is Hellions they're fighting. As you can see, some Lings are going in this attack path, while others are being microed this way. Uh, this allows him to split his forces between the mineral lines, if you saw that. Some Lings went here, some Lings went there. And this allows him to surround these Hellions and do a lot more DPS. He is actually going to clean up most of the Hellions, if not all of them. Boom. All but one. And while this happened, there was an engagement over here. So let's back it up and show you that as well. Here you go. So again, small skirmishes rather than big battles and some banelings. Not the best usage of the banelings, but you know he did clear out and bruise a couple of the marines. And the marines are being split up now, part to this fourth base, part into the main. Notice how he's sending some of his units uh, to the uh, high ground over here, and then some over here. It's just really important to be able to split your units. Uh, there's plenty of videos on my channel on micro techniques for Zerg to do such. And then you just use your lings and blings uh, to keep the marine count from ever actually falling out of the meta back. Once the uh, mutalisks finish, of course, you'll be able to clear out the meta backs as well. And it's now 12 and a half minutes. So this is really the scary, scary time. Um, we just went through kind of the build up through it. Um, but some key timings for that is that... Uh, once the lings were sent down that counterattack path, 17 banelings were made at home. Uh, that was somewhere around 11, 15, 11 and a half minutes. Uh, this is just 
you know, a pre-assessment that there will be an attack at 12 and a half minutes, and he continues to make lings. He's spreading creep like a madman. As soon as he can, he begins plus two melee attack, this time favoring the melee upgrade as opposed to the carapace upgrade, and then follows it up with plus one flying attack. It's going to be all about doing damage. 1215, he was able to get plus two carapace. Again, he's just getting the upgrades before he gets the mutalisks. Once he's got the two two and the plus one flying on the way, he completely ramps out mutal production and gets the gas at the fourth base as quickly as possible. Now that we're at 12 and a half minutes, he, uh, he knows this is what we're calling scary, scary time. And he's gonna put spine crawlers at easy to drop bases. This in particular is an easy to drop base. Uh, and he uh, is going to put it some stuff on the high ground, different techniques. There's a lot of map specific techniques you'll have to learn, but in the important general thing to walk away with is if it's harder to get your lings there quickly, put a spine crawler to delay. You, this spine crawler is never going to set make your tear and go, oh, I shouldn't drop this. It just makes him a little more cautious in the way he drops it, and it buys you time to get there to respond and spread your army out as much as possible between your fringe bases because even now it's not all going to be about one big battle it's still going to be a series of minor engagements now this is the uh, ending point for my notes so we're just going to you know speed through the rest of this so you can see how the game develops uh, again it's all about the upgrades and then just pumping out ling, muta, bling defending the drops and constantly doing these little counterattacks. See, he's even got blings rolling out, 2-2 two -two upgrades, all this stuff. A uh, little bit of an error, he doesn't have his three guys here, I believe that was taken out in the drop. Uh, but either way, you know, lings are going to be intercepted. Even though they're intercepted, lings are so cheap, it's totally worth it to send these and lose them than to not send them. Uh, because every now and then they'll get in and do damage, and either way it's a free scout. It forces your opponent to move his army wherever you want it, as opposed to where he wants it. And then, you know, drops getting cleaned up again, small numbers of mutas. Don't worry about being offensive with them, be defensive. It's uh, it's enough offense that you force missile turrets. And the thing is, Major's only had to build one missile turret so far, because uh, he even knows this guy's going to be defensive with these moves. If he, if Hendrilisk was offensive with these, he'd probably lose a lot to drops. So if you find yourself losing a lot to your drops, ask if you're being too active with your mutas. It's only now, at about 14 minutes, we get Pneumatized Carapace, but this is still such an important upgrade for this matchup. It is hands down the one of the most important upgrades because scouting information is hugely critical and you're going to need overlords everywhere to start picking off drops going into the late game as they will be coming at you non-stop also you can put your overlords in positions like these to delay your opponent from taking command centers and that is always a great feeling uh, you can see spore crawlers being built as well again this is a fringe base this is probably the most vulnerable drop base so that's how he's choosing to defend that we've got plus two flying attack beginning here at 1430 and uh yeah again nothing but muta bling as far as gas is concerned check it out major actually made a little bit of a mistake he pushed on the creep about 10 seconds before his upgrades finished all of his upgrades are synced to finish at you know 15 15 but he loses a significant portion of his army by trying to go on creep and eliminate the creep. See, all he's doing here is trying to push creep back. But because the creep spread is so good and the lings and blings are already in production, he's able to get in here and take out a pretty good chunk of the Terran army. And as these upgrades are finishing, the lings are converging here. Notice he surrounds this huge cluster of uh, marines before he tries to engage on it. This is going to cause the Widow Mines to do large amounts of friendly fire. Ultimately, it didn't work out that way, but that was the goal. And either way, the Marines are being forced back now, 
And the Thor here is really there to deal with the uh, the Mutalist. This also works kind of as a lynch point. Um, the Marines, the idea is to use the Marines to poke forward in small numbers and bait the uh, Zerg army backwards with the Widow Mines in position. The Thor kind of stands in the middle of the Widow Mines so you don't have to kite backwards as much. Um, the Widow Mines will basically wipe out the wings which naturally cluster around the Thor if not microed 100% properly and that's going to be the end of the Ling army. The thing is that Thor was so far behind when that engagement began see here's the marines here's the thor here's the widow mines great way to, you know have it was widow mines here but the widow mines are a little bit too far back to be able to keep these marines safe so major just slightly out of position here if he should have waited for the Thor and leapfrogged his uh, Widow Mines slightly better. And again, just imagine if the Thor was here. But either way, uh, Hengel is doing a great job uh, seeing that moment of weakness. Always look for these key moments and, uh, you know, kill the Thor as soon as possible. Uh, if you can pick it off. If it's with everything else, kill everything else first because it's just there to absorb damage. Um, that's actually pretty much it. Uh, same themes will last you. Again, just uh, be prepared to stay active against drops, especially when you're attacking with Mutalisks. That's the key time for him to try to attack you, uh, to try to drop you. He plays by the same rules you would for counterattacks. Whenever your opponent's army is out of position, counterattack. Well, the same thing's true for dropping. So if, when you start being aggressive, when you start moving on your opponent's side of the map, make sure you've got spines and spores in every mineral line, and just start rallying wings to mineral lines that are being dropped. Okay, well, we've taken a look today at um, some key timings for both Zerg and Terran in this matchup. We looked at how to stay safe against the Reaper Hellion harassment, and we talked a lot about how the Reaper Hellion expand opening sets the Terran player behind on both on worker and mule count uh, initially. We also discussed how that same opener is required for the Terran to stay safe. But realizing that the Reaper Hellion is not intended to kill you and learning proper ways to react to that, uh, this should allow you to have a much healthier economy going into the mid-game, allowing you to take a third base in a timely manner, getting a fourth base up and running before your Spire so that you have eight gas income once your Spire completes. All of these are key success stories uh, for this style. I want you to take a look at the graph one more time, memorize these timings, and just really look at that worker count. You don't have to memorize the numbers of the workers, but just real, just think for one second. 415, 445, the Terran is even with the Zerg on workers. Uh, which, that's kind of odd, because typically Terran are just a couple bit, a couple ahead, uh, at this stage in the game and the Zerg takes an advantage in the mid. Uh, that reason being for that is our workers die when we build buildings. At seven minutes, he's got a 12 worker lead despite the harassment because he's using all his larvae for drones and defending with larvaless units like queens. By 12.30, the worker counts have normalized, but the gas count has not. By that time, Zerg has managed to secure his ideal gas count for the Ling Bling Muta composition that is a tried and true of Zerg play south. If the Zerg can get there, there's really little a Terran can do to stop him other than perfect micro, which we described to you earlier as well. Guys, I hope this helped. 
Uh, please leave us feedback if uh, you know you still have questions, anything like that. If you want to see more stuff like this, you know, give us a like, give us a subscribe. Uh, also, I'm accepting topic ideas. Um, I know uh, a lot of players are having some trouble with mech right now, so I'm messing around with some mech um, analysis and strategies. So. You know, just give us some feedback, let us know what topics you're interested in, what you want to know more about, and I'm definitely going to try and make those videos happen. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. This is Shaft of the Plenty Casting Crew, wishing you an amazing day. Thank you so much for being awesome. Bye-bye! <laughs> Oh, <laughs>